Okay. Bank one, sensor two. And then at the bottom, bank two, sensor two. As you can see, the voltage here, the voltage there is similar, but look at the waveform. Okay, and the further it goes, look at the beginning. You can see the bank one cat is much better, that's the second graph down, than the fourth graph down, which is the brand new aftermarket bank two. Now, as you can see, the voltage is different bank to bank. Okay, even though it's steady, it's not what GM wants to see, and therefore GM flags the code. So until you can get the fourth graph to look like the second graph, okay, and I'm holding about 2,000 RPM, and this is for a P430, CAD efficiency, low bank two. Okay. And it's just that different. See the 750 and the 710? It's got to be the 750. I know it seems like such a small difference, but GM catches it every time. Every time. You know, and I think it has something to do with the start of the ramp here to where it stays steady. And you can see the oscillations are much smaller. Okay, and now the other two sensors, those are the upstream. Okay, those look perfect. You want them switching back and forth very rapidly, which is what you're seeing. Okay, now when I come off the throttle, both of these are gonna, they're gonna go high and then they'll go back down. Oh, now you see the other problem. The good sensor, the good cat, which is the second line, it went up. The bad cat, it went down. I say bad cat, aftermarket cat. So it doesn't have the oxygen storage capacity that it should, which is represented in graph number two versus graph number four. So even though technically it's working it doesn't meet the programming parameters set forth by GM because GM has figured out a way to make the only catalytic converter that will work on their uh, vehicles and that's for the most part all of them is a GM catalytic converter okay so that was off the throttle there in the middle okay so I'm gonna go back up to 3000 say 2500 okay once again you see the opposite you see a rise on the factory cat you see a drop on the uh, aftermarket cat now this is just me sitting still in a parking lot okay so when you're on a road these changes here and here will be much more noticeable and GM looks at that information when you're coming down off of cruising to a coast coming to a stop even they even have a uh, idle cat test where they're just checking it at idle so uh, it's a lot harder I just came off the throttle now that time they look the same which I'll admit was not what I was expecting let's see what they say now Still, the factory cat is 10 millivolts higher than the aftermarket. It can be just that much. You know, and the thing about it too is it looks over a long period of time. Yeah, see, graph four is starting to drop again. Okay, I'm gonna punch it, let off, we'll see what happens. And one more time.
Now I'm going to pump it repeatedly. Okay, so we sent just a whole bunch of fuel down there. Let's see what it does. Climbed right off the chart. Still. So it's those deviations that are causing the light to come on. And short of uh, making the programming less stringent, there's really no way to fix it other than putting a factory cat on it. So that's how these work. Top line is bank one, sensor one. Second line is bank one sensor two, that's after the cat. Line three is bank two sensor one. And the fourth line is bank two sensor two after the cat. And so this aftermarket cat overall is different enough where the computer is deciding it's not as efficient as it should be. And it probably has a lot more to do with the earlier uh, opposite you know uh, readings there I mean they were direct opposite of each other and you know that's not good